Okay, so um, this is the second video um, in which I want to show you through the actual function part of the question. Um, so hopefully in watching the last video you understand a little better but I, what I mean when I say walk through the code line by line. It's really important if you don't know what a command does to really understand what the heck is going on before you move on. Um, and I think if you can spend a little bit of time catching up you'll be able to do that. So the first thing I wanted to show you is what is a function and how does it work. So before we do a complicated function I wanted to do a simple function. So let's do one that adds two numbers together. Um, so add num, um, so we give it a name, as a function, and so we need two numbers in here, which means we need to pass it two variables, and we will call them x and y. And inside of that, um, so this returns whatever you tell it to return. So in this case, this is really only a one-line function, we're going to return x plus y, right? So now um, I'm going to go ahead and enter this. Okay, so you can see it's entered, but nothing happens. And the reason that this is that functions are different from things like loops is when you do a loop, it actually does it. But functions are things that you can call later many times. So if you need to run a loop many times, you have to copy and paste the loop every single time. But if you write a function, you can just call the function whenever you need it. So the way you call a function is by using the name of the function. And then we need to give it two variables. Um, in this case, let's do three and four and we put it in, and it gives us 7. So what's going on in the background is add num calls the thing, 3 is saved to variable x, and 4 is saved to variable y, and then it returns 3 plus 4. So that's how a simple function works. You have to call the name of the function, whatever you pass it is renamed as this, right? Um, so in this case 3 becomes x and 4 becomes y. So this becomes important. And the thing about functions is you have to, everything in a function has to be self-contained, by which I mean you can only refer to x and y. You couldn't refer, like, let's say I put in z out here. Um, you know, I made some variable z, which is 3. Great. Um, so then I could do add num z plus 4. Um, but you can't do that in a function. Functions have to only refer to things inside the function. So that doesn't work. Um, but I could do something like, um, so now I've put in z, um, but now I can, I, I couldn't use z in here. So I couldn't do return z plus y. It wouldn't know what to do with this z. But if I wanted to do that, I could do add num uh, z comma 4, and we will also get 7, right? So this is the basics of how a function works. Now what I want to do is um, I've copied and pasted all of the code that I showed you in the last video um, and how to calculate Moran's i. And then I've set up a function here, um, just like I showed you for the other one, where so Moran i is a function that takes in data. And then here's all of the steps that we need to um, actually calculate Moran's i. So calculate n. Let's go up. We're just seriously going to copy and paste here. So now we know what n is. n is the length of Paul's. Great. I'm just going to copy and paste. Calculate weights matrix. Okay. Um, that was this, right? Um, this was the weights matrix part. And then y minus y bar. Let's see. There's values y and y bar. And then here's the next chunk. So it looks like we need both chunks of this and also this. Okay, I'll copy this first and then we'll come back for that second little chunk. So now we've got, so we needed y minus y bar, y minus y bar. Um, I'm actually going to move this. I think this is more properly under this section. So now that I need that last little chunk of code, um, I mean, matrix of it. Great. And then now we've got the matrix. And now we need the multiplication by the weights. 
Um, yep. And then we also need the sum of the values. Sum of values, right? And now we need the value by the sum of the weights, compute the inverse variance, and then calculate it. I'm just going to copy all of this wholesale. Okay, so now we've got a bunch of crap in here. Um, let's clean it up by getting rid of all of the extraneous comments, just so we can see it all hopefully on one screen. Okay, great. So, um, the thing is, so now I told you that everything has to refer to data that you do here in a function. So our first problem is, is this refers to Paul's, not data. So basically everything, so remember Paul's is that um, spatial polygons data frame. So head Paul's at data. So this is that spatial polygons data frame. What we're going to do is I want to walk through this step by step before I try and run the whole function. And so what I'm going to do is cheat a little bit. So if I rename Paul's to data, so data is Paul's, now I can refer to data as things and actually calculate this line by line. So n is the length of data. Does this work? It should be 103. Yep, sure does. So now... Um, we need to retain both of these references to data, right? And so I'm going to run that. Awesome. Now we need to make the weights matrix. So now WM is our weights matrix, right? So we can refer to stuff we've created, right? So we created WR, and so now we can refer to it here. But what you can't do is refer to Paul's. So um, next step, Paul's TB. Clearly not going to work, so now it's data TB. Great. Um, y bar is the mean of y. We refer to y here, so that's great. And then we've got dy, which is also great. Um, now we've got this matrix y i y j, um, which I believe actually belongs here, right? Because we can't call y i y j before we create it. So that was just in the wrong spot. So. Now we have dy, so we can do the expand.grid thing. Great, no errors, it works. Next step, next step, next step, next step. Great, it works. So now we've got the sum of it, and then you divide it, the inverse variance, and then that should be our final thing. So then you put in return mi, right? So mi is the final number that is Moran's i. So let's clean this up just a hair more so we can see what's going on. And it's useful to comment it like this so that you can look at it later and see what the heck is going on. Great. So now we have a function that only refers back to data that um, does Moran's eye. So now we can copy the entire thing in. Um, why are you not behaving? There we go. Okay, so now it works. So now if we just type in Moran I, it'll just spit the function back out to us, right? It doesn't actually do the calculation. So now, you have to give it something, and the something will be Paul's. And so what, what should happen is we give it Paul's. Paul's becomes gets renamed as data, and then we do all these calculations based on data, right? So what it should spit out at the end is it does all of these steps, and at the end it spits out MI, which is Moran's index. So if we do this, it should spit out the number MI. Let's see if it works. Awesome. It worked. So... That is how you write a function 
So keep in mind it refers back to data. So now I've got your function down here, and so there's a few problems. Um, one, um, you can call this n or anything you want, but you still have to refer back to it. So um, if n, let's let's rename n is Paul's, right? So now we've called it n because that's what we're going to pass in. Now if I type in n minus 1, it doesn't work because n is actually a data frame um, and not a number, and so you can't subtract 1 from it. So that's one problem. The other thing is like this doesn't get named as anything, um, so you have to call it something. You can call it anything you want. I just typed in n minus 1 here. Um, so once you do that, so if we look back up here to the Moran function, you can see that to get n is the length of data. So if we come back down here, so n minus 1 would be the length of data minus 1. If we're calling it n, though, instead of data, it would be the length of n minus 1. Now if we enter it, oh, right, you can't do it this way. It's the length of n minus 1. Okay, great. Now we don't have an error. Right? Now we got 102, which we know is the right answer. So now um, you've got the weights matrix, um, the code of which is up here, right? Um, so it would be the, the same code, right? Because it's the same data frame, and the weights matrix is the same for both calculations. Um, so squared distance from the mean is yi minus y bar squared. So you need to come back and get the yi and y bar. And then this is the distance from the mean, and then you would square it, right? Um, the other thing is, is you need the cross products here. So if you look back at the formula, it is this yi minus yj squared. But to actually calculate it, remember, so this is, this is the steps to get yi, yj. And then you make a matrix. So here it gets multiplied by the weights, but instead of multiplying it by the weights, you would multiply it by itself to square it. Um, so for example. So hopefully that gives you some guide into getting this done. Um, really the only difference between Moran's i and Gary's n is that you use n minus 1, and then instead of doing, um, instead of subtracting yi by the mean, you're actually comparing the numbers directly to each other. So this line is different. Um, I believe you still need this line um, because um, you use it in the bottom equation. So I guess what I suggest is go back to the equation and you hopefully can see which step each of these things are and um, re-implement everything about Moran's I that's relevant and see if you can figure out this cross products line. All right, email me back if you need any more help.